this year's unfinished business. Building on from what we did last year. We did a lot of good things, but uh, we could have done a lot more. I mean, we have a, a really talented squad. We're coming together as a family, and you can tell it's uh, paying off. The coverage in the back gets you sacks, and that pressure gets you interceptions. And uh, our guys understand that, and they got to work together. And tonight, we got pressure on the quarterback, and uh, we were able to get some interceptions. Downfield. He's got it! Touchdown, Sabercats! Welcome to Sabercats Weekly here on Comcast Sportsnet. I'm Chris Townsend. The Sabercats blew out the LA Kiss opening night at SAP Center. Coming up next, we'll go over the highlights with the head coach, Darren Arbett. We'll also talk to the new quarterback for the Sabercats, Eric Meyer. That's all coming up next right here on Sabercats Weekly. We're with the owner and head coach of the San Jose Sabercats, Darren Arbett. Coach, how are we doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Chris. Off to a great start this year. I know a home opener is always big because you have all your fans there. Pretty good win against the LA Kiss. The guys played hard. We still made a lot of mistakes, but they played hard, and they played for four quarters, and they finished the game. Yeah, and you really got it going early on the very first drive. Odie Armstrong, went that. he's a big kid, Coach, and when he goes off right, it's tough to bring him down. One of the better running backs in this league when he carries the football. Did a nice job going off that side and getting in the end zone. I thought a huge play at the start of this game was then on the next kickoff. I don't know if it was Pertwee or who it was, but they barely got the tackle and keeping the return guy from getting into the end zone, which then would lead to the big fourth and 24 sack. So you not only do you keep him from getting a touchdown on the kickoff, but you also get the stop. It was Virgil Gray number four. He did a tremendous job hustling down and making that tackle and you're right they didn't end up scoring on that drive. Eric Meyer was seeing a lot of versatility with him on the very next drive he'd hit Reggie Gray coming across the end zone. He, you just see that Eric has great feet. He really does. He can move in the pocket really well. He keeps his head up. He's always looking down the field and big play. Reggie Gray made another play and got into the end zone. And then how about the next defensive stance three straight passes not completed and you get another stop. Defense is playing well right now. That pressure is relentless, and those guys are doing a nice job covering back there. And one of my favorite plays is when you throw it to the offensive lineman, Rich Wrangling. Nobody's expecting it. It was an easy touchdown. Rich has done a nice job as far as getting his hands uh, ready. Last year he had dropped a few and in the middle of the year, and at the end of the year he really worked on it, caught 16 balls last year, and I expect for him to catch a lot more this year. How much do the offensive linemen love it when you, when you give them the football? Oh, they love it. Anytime you call their number and they get an opportunity to catch that football and get into the end zone, it's big for them. Some of these guys have never touched, you know, think of college or where else they've played pro. They've never even touched the football before. No, they haven't. But uh, Richard, like I said, I like what he's doing. He's putting in a lot of work to catch the football on the run. And then a touchdown to Ben Nelson. What I really liked about this one was Eric Meyer, once again with the feet, rolled left, evaded the pressure, and then kind of slinged its sidearm and just a bullet to Ben Nelson. You know, Ben is... Doing a tremendous job getting open, a little long at the tooth, but he still can play, <laughs> still can run, and he has great hands. Yeah, I saw him in the locker room. Like, how old have you been? Are you 35 years old? He's, uh -huh. We've been doing this a long time, Coach, and he's been around for, for a lot of it. So that made it 26-7, to and then David Hyland with the interception pick six makes it 34-7, and you guys are on to the route. He does that to us uh, every day at practice, not so much now, but early on he got his hands on a lot of balls, and I expect for him to do that uh, during the season. And then we almost saw one of the great returns. It was called back at the end of the half. I was right there on the field. That was almost one of the best returns I've ever seen in this game. Unfortunately, with the penalty, it was called back. He's so elusive when he has the ball in his hands, and he can smell that end zone. And I like what he does, and he's going to get back there and return some this year for sure. David Hyland comes in and plays wide receiver. I didn't know he played wide receiver, and he caught a touchdown for you in the third quarter. You know, David can do it all. He can kick. He's our extra kicker, receiver. Really? He can throw the ball at quarterback. Obviously, that linebacker spot, defensive back, return man, he can do it all. He's the Swiss Army knife of the San Jose Sabercats. Yes, he is. I love it. He's a backup kicker. And then Virgil Gray, who's... 
really having a phenomenal year for you to start. He gets the pick six. Unbelievable the way your secondary is playing. It really is, and, and their standard is really high. I think if you would talk to them right now, they would feel that they left a few of them out on the field, and, and, and I like their standard, and Virgil Gray expects to do what he's doing every football game as well as Kenny Fontenet and Eric Crocker and David Hyland. And then you have Reggie Gray would end the scoring for you, giving you 54 points with a four-yard touchdown. Uh, when you look at this team, final 54-28, the offense has been so explosive, and that really supports what your defense has been doing. Your defense has been phenomenal. Both sides of the ball is playing really hard. Defense is getting a lot of turnovers right now. Offense, like I said, we need to cut down on some of the penalties, but they're making a lot of progress. And it's always big, isn't it? The first time your season ticket holders and, and the fans see it for the first time at the arena to put on a really good show. We, we want to play football, and we're, we're football players and football coaches, and anytime we have an opportunity to get out on the football field and coach and play, we're going to do that. And It's great that our fans were there. I feel they're the best in the league, and it was an exciting night for all of us. Wardrobe has been brought to you by Eli Thomas Menswear. The San Jose Sabercats threw a great party for their season ticket holders before the start of the season at AFK Gamer Lounge in downtown San Jose. Let's take a look at all the action. Well, tonight is an event for our season ticket holders to come and meet our players, our Sabre Kittens and the coaches and thank them for their support and kick off the season. And they, they can come and pick up their season tickets and a little gift that we have for them. It's an awesome event. Uh, you know, we have great fans. They always come out and support us. So as you can see, I mean, we've got a ton of people out here showing us love and getting excited about the season. So I love the Sabre Cats. They're the number one uh, indoor football there is, and I'm a great fan of theirs. But it's a big birthday party for the fans because we're all ready for the season. We're going to win the bowl this year. We're going to we're going to do it. We've been debating to have a uh, mascot for years. I took it upon myself, along with the help of my wife and a few others, to design a costume. Tonight we revealed our newest member to the team. His name is Pounce. I love Pounce. I mean, I've been trying to get him to get a Pounce since 95. Favorite foods, of course, are Rattlers, Predators, and he'll even go after a few Outlaw or two. I'm excited to have somebody that the kids can uh, get excited about and can be out there. I guess Sabercats roar. Pounce is great. His outfit is phenomenal, and I just think it's going to be so fun adding another element to the game. It's great to have a mascot. Oh, yeah. It's terrific. Right. We need somebody to give the opposing team a bad time down there. <laughs> he does get along very well with the kittens, and you'll see them at the games. I like the way the team's shaped up. I think coaching staff has done a tremendous job. You know, we have a new coach on board, and so that's he, Terry Malley. I like our quarterback choices with new receivers with Adron Tunnell. We have a great team. Um, it's just getting the chemistry and, you know, everybody trusting each other and, and playing well together, but that'll come. We got a lot of great fans. This is my first year on the team, so uh, a lot of the guys brought me in. I feel like a family here with, the, with this group of guys and everybody's clicking already, so it's going to be a fun season. Yeah, I'm hoping we beat the Rattlers this year. <laughs> We've got a lot of good guys playing, and it looks like it's going to be a good year. Waiting for that trophy. I think Sabercats are going to kill it. I've heard that we're looking really good this year, and I'm really excited for another round of playoffs and hopefully Arena Bowl. I know that we're going to the playoffs and we're going to win. Our high school offensive player of the week is number 59 offensive guard Mitch Mickelson from Clayton Valley Charter School. For the 2014 season, Mitch anchored an offensive line that opened holes for over 7,000 yards, plus over 1,200 passing yards, and an eye-popping 109 offensive TDs, helping Clayton Valley earn a state championship game bid. 
Our high school defensive player of the week is linebacker number 43, Marco Tapia of Granite Hills High School, who amassed 10 tackles, including three sacks, and a 40-zip blowout over Rosamond High School. Our high school Ironman player of the week is number 15, tight end slash linebacker, Tanner Spence of the Scotts Valley Falcons. Standing six foot seven, Tanner had seven catches for 98 yards and one touchdown, one extra point catch, an interception, and a fumble recovery in the 27-12 win over the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Sabercats High School Players of the Week is brought to you by Dr. Sharma, South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. This week's offensive player of the game is quarterback Eric Meyer. Meyer completed 20 of 31 passes, accumulating 222 yards and five touchdowns in the win over the LA Kiss. Offensive player of the game is brought to you by Fries.com. Well, now joining us on Sabercats Weekly, I know a lot of fans have been waiting for this one. The new quarterback, Eric Meyer, is with us. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me. So what's it like? You play against San Jose. You've beaten San Jose in the past. Coach Arbet now brings you here. What's it like being a San Jose Sabercat? It's been fun. It's been a, it's a, it's a new adventure. It's a, you know, a new challenge, but uh, you know, I'm excited to be here, and uh, you know, I just appreciate the opportunity. How did you view the organization from the outside, and then now how do you view it? Well, I knew it was, I knew it was tough playing against them. You know, we've always had some, uh, some good battles in the past, and, uh, you know, they've always had a tough defense. So it was always fun going against them, and uh, it was always a challenge. And then, you know, uh, playing for them now, it's, uh, you know, it's different. You know, I like it. I like being here, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything in the world right now to, you know, to be here. Yeah, expectations every year. It's, it's arena, arena bowl or bust. How do you feel about those high expectations? I like it. You know, that's uh, you know that's one reason uh, you know we play the game. You know, the you know you always got to set those high expectations. And uh, if your goal isn't to win a championship uh, at the end of the year, then uh, you know you, you know you should be playing the sport because uh, it's a it's it's a challenge. It's a it's a it's a tough one, and it's um it's hard to you know to stay focused for that many weeks and uh, you know to come every week uh, focused, prepared to play each game. So it's a uh, you know, it's always a challenge, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, have it any other way. Yeah, you talk about the schedule, very demanding. The indoor war is tough, and you're playing an 18-game schedule. It's 20 weeks with two buys, but talk about how long that is. I mean, that's a long season. It is a long season, and it's tough. It's, uh, it's definitely taxing on the body, especially playing on those, uh, you know, the Astro turf, and, you know, you got the walls. But, uh, you know, fortunate for me, I'm a quarterback, so, you know, hopefully I don't get uh, hit too much on the walls or get hit too much at all. Well, last year you broke your clavicle and it was huge news in the Arena Football League because the year before you are the MVP. What was that like being out and what did you learn by sitting out and just watching? It was tough. You know, we were, uh, you know, we were having a good season, good year so far, and, uh, you know, just a freak accident. Didn't get hit too hard. Just kind of landed wrong and, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, fractured my clavicle. Um, but it was, uh, it was kind of a, a blessing in disguise where I got hurt. And, uh, you know, and I came back, uh, I think I came back more prepared and more focused to, to, f to finish that season because it kind of, you know, kind of kind of happened, free, uh, you know, accidentally. And then I, you know, come back and, you know, I have to, you know, kind of start all over again as far as throwing and getting my uh, fundamentals down and just kind of, you know, getting back in the game and staying positive with that and kind of overcoming, uh, overcoming that, um, that situation in, in the middle of the season. Did you see the game differently? I think I just came back more focused, more ready to, to prove something. You know, uh, you know, they, they told me I was going to be out for a while, and you know, and I, I didn't see it that way. I, you know, I was I was trying to get back as fast as possible to get back in the game. So I think when I came back from that, I just came back more focused and more prepared. You know, I remember two years ago playing against you. I was in the end, you know, in the end zone behind you, and I watched you just tuck it and run. I went, man, this guy's got. He's got it all. You're the total package. I like how your mobility, like in the game against L.A., Ben Nelson caught the touchdown where you rolled left and you kind of threw it sidearm. I mean, talk about your overall game because it seems you can, there's nothing you can't do on this field. No, I've always been taught, uh, you know, growing up, especially in college, you know, I had a, I had a really good quarterback coach. And, uh, you know, one thing was always, you know, keeping the play alive, you know, moving your feet. And, uh, you know, with quarterback, you know, it starts from, starts from your feet and works your way up. So I always try to do a good job as far as, you know, get my feet keep my feet moving, keep my feet alive, and make sure my, uh, you know, my lower body's in position to make the throw. Well, you're off to a great start. We appreciate you stopping by, and, you know, it's going to be an interesting road trip in Florida. Have you ever done a road trip where you didn't come home after the game? Yeah, we did one two years ago when, we, you know, in Spokane. We, uh, we had the same, same schedule, uh, 
so we were there for like a week and a half. So, you know, uh, I'm excited, you know, be on the road, be with the guys and, uh, you know, be in the hotels and, you know, get that, uh, you know, keep working on that uh, team chemistry. Yeah, since you're a new guy, good for team bonding? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Stay healthy this year, and we'll have you on again during the playoffs. Sounds good. Appreciate you having me. This week's defensive player of the game is defensive lineman Luis Vasquez. Vasquez totaled two and a half sacks against the Los Angeles Kiss last Saturday night. Defensive player of the game is brought to you by South Bay Orthopedics. The owner and head coach of the Sabercats, Darren Arbett, with us once again here on Sabercats Weekly. And coach, the schedule makers did you no favors as you got back-to-back -back games in the state of Florida. You're taking on Tampa and then Jacksonville. That's not easy. No. Both of them are very good teams. We're concentrating right now on Tampa. They went into Portland and, and got a big victory. Mm -hmm. They played well. They're a team we definitely have to be concerned about right now. This kind of trip, you're not going to come back. You're going to stay in Florida. How does that work out, keeping your football team for two weeks out of the state? Great opportunity for us to bond as a team, get to know each other, uh, spend a lot of time together. You're gonna, we're going to be there nine, ten days, and so the guys are going to be uh, staying together and, and, and going out to the movies and eating together a lot. So it, it's a great deal for the team. And is it the same thing for the coaching staff, too? It really is. That's a great question, and yeah. Uh, get, getting to uh, myself reacquainted with uh, Coach Malley again and Coach Jarn again and all of us sitting down, Coach Walker and Coach Smith, it's going to be great for us to spend some time together. Terry Malley and you have had a lot of success together in this league. Of course, he was not here for some years over at San Jose State. Now he's back with you as your offensive coordinator. What's it been like having him back? It's been awesome. He's the best coach uh, that I've ever been around in my life, and I've said that a million times. And just having him back, it raises a bar for all of us because he does such a great job of being detailed and just demanding a lot from that, his offensive players, and it makes you want to grow around him. Now, you don't get to have a, a big training camp, and I know he has an elaborate playbook and expectations. Where do you think the players are with Terry Malley right now? Because it's still very early in the season. I think they would say they're having fun. You know, he's funny with it. He's going to test you all the time, and he has a great sense of humor, but he gets a lot of work done. And right now, I, I think they say, hey, it's work in progress. And Eric Meyer, his new quarterback, how's that relationship? Because we remember the great Mark Reeb, what, how great he was and the relationship he had with Terry Malley. What's this relationship like between offensive coordinator and quarterback? You know, from what I see, I don't sit down in their meetings and talk to him too much. But, uh, you know, Eric's a pro. I mean, how can you not, not like Eric Meyer? as a human being as well as a, a player. He's a professional. He comes to work every day. He loves to compete, competes hard in practice. In the meeting room, I hear him in there, you know, uh, barking and trying to get things done. So he loves the game of football, and you know Mr. Malley loves it. Well, you said about uh, Ben Nelson a little long in the tooth. As I was getting ready for this interview, I'm looking at Tampa, and I go, T.T. Tolliver's still playing, Coach. 38 years old. He had 150 yards last week and three touchdowns for Tampa. Still productive, just like Ben. I mean, both of those guys are a little long at the tooth, but they still can play. Very productive. He's someone we're going to have to center around and, 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 and take care of him this week. Your secondary has been phenomenal. Your defensive line has been phenomenal. Which one helps the other the most? You know, it's a team effort. And week in and week out, guys are trying to get better and give it everything that they have. So I just think we work off each other. And, and we're going to play hard, and we're going to play together, and we're going to believe in each other. Yeah, because you see it. You see the defensive line harassing the quarterback, but one of the reasons why they're harassing the quarterback is because the secondary has such great coverage. This defense is so early in the season, but, but looks so good, Coach. Pressure pick, cover sack, and, and that's what they believe in over there on that defensive side of the ball, and they're working together, and I, I really like that group. Well, enjoy Florida, Coach. you got two games against two really good teams. Of course, Jacksonville the week after that, one of the better teams in the league. They've gotten off to a tough start. They've had some bad luck, but they're still one of the best teams in the league. I can tell you about Tampa Bay. They won in Portland, and, you know, that's the one we have up next. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that football game, and we got to get a lot better to beat them. Good luck in Florida, Coach. Thank you. 
The Sabercats start the season 2-0, and they now go on a long road trip to Florida where they'll be taking on Tampa Bay and Jacksonville. We'll have all the action for you next week right here on Sabercats Weekly. We'll see you next time. Sabercats Weekly has been brought to you by Dr. Sharma South Bay Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, Swan, Pepsi, and Fries.com.